What's up? Welcome to Worship Leader Hangout. I'm glad you're here because today we're looking at a stage design my friends at Cornerstone Church built. We're taking a look at this design because I'm considering making this uh, either for our main auditorium or our youth auditorium. And instead of just looking at the design at their church, we're actually going to try to build this ourselves and see what kind of work it takes to put into this to make this happen, as well as maybe uh, an idea of what it will cost. But before we go into the design build, let's go back to Cornerstone Church and take a look at the clip that I cut out of the behind the scenes of them talking about their stage design. Let's go. We did this um, last Easter. Last Easter, yeah. And we've been thinking about, we actually, Mike Edwards, uh, who's no longer with us, he was our technical director, he actually came up with this idea. And at first I thought, hmm, that's not really going to look good, Mike. <laughs> and um, That's usually what I get. And man, we, we got to working on it. And then I, I'm like, I think this is actually going to work really good. <laughs> the and these, these blinders, they work absolutely fantastic. Um, Zachary's yeah. able to program them and able to operate strands of them independently. Right. So each light doesn't operate independently just because we don't have enough DMX universes. Right, that's cool. He's able to operate them independently so that it can it can do chases and things yeah. like that, but it's really effective when we have the big blinders, you know, like da 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 you know, big yeah. big music. Yeah, that's for cool. accents. It looks you know, really cool. Easter we did um last Easter and this Easter we did graves into gardens. Mm -hmm. And so just using those blinders was just made the, the crowd was just awesome so yeah. i mean it's added a lot of effect. are they leds no these no, are those are those are halogen bulbs yeah. oh really yeah. okay so, so you can get kind dimmable, of warm huh? dimmable halogen bulbs. yeah nice that's it yeah and they are in the, all individual standing units yes they're, you can hang they're them individual if you really standing to. units that are tied together at the top just because they would lean in and out right yeah yeah so we just tied one all the way across yeah that's smart yeah. All Don't ask me how it's all wired together in DMX. <laughs> I'm uh, sure each each of these are is going to a dimmer. Like yeah, there. each of those is going to a dimmer pack. Yeah, just behind the screen. Okay, gotcha. yeah, it's going to a dimmer. <laughs> it's just one. It's just one DMX coming out. That's it. That looks really good. Looking at this design in more detail, we see that there are six lamps per column, four columns on each side of the screen, and two columns on the far left and the far right. I think it'd be nice with three columns on the far left and right, but they decided to go with two. Each column is built with a simple conduit frame on each side of six evenly spaced work lamp fixtures. Oh, yep, we want that one. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> Having trouble there? Yeah. I wonder what the difference is between this one and this one. So they use six, but we're gonna use five because we're making ours a little shorter to be able to fit in my studio. There it is. In each fixture, they use a PAR 30 LED bulb that is warm in color as opposed to like a daylight colored bulb. Now we're gonna try to build one column ourselves. I'm gonna do a seven foot column instead of 10 feet because there's measures out at 10 feet tall. Getting started building this, you wanna start with the base. The base is made of a two by eight, cut an 18 inch section off of a either a two by six or a two by eight. And then you're gonna want to have uh, two foot legs on either side and that's made of a one by four. What's good is Lowe's and Home Depot carry one by fours in a four foot section so you can just cut that in half. So I got my halfway mark which was eight inches because the overall width was about 16 inches. And then I measured out by laying two pieces of the conduit on the table and measured out exactly how wide the conduit needed to be to fit the fixture properly. Then I'm gonna install the conduit and I'm using a bit that is a three quarters inch bit to drill straight down into the top of the two by six board. And then install your conduit. You wanna make sure the top of these are perfectly level. One side of mine wasn't quite level, so I just beat that sucker down into the wood a little bit more. And then they were both perfectly level at the top. Before you paint, you wanna measure 
all of your points where you're going to drill into the conduit and make sure you have your light fixtures perfectly spaced how you want to space them so your spacing may not be the same as mine i went with five fixtures i mounted one at the top and then i mounted one at the bottom and then i just measured the halfway mark between that put one there and then measure the halfway mark between the top and middle and the bottom and middle and put one there and i went ahead and drilled my holes before i took it outside to paint then take it outside and paint the conduit i used a spray paint a flat black and then paint the base and i used just your regular latex wall paint or whatever that paint is uh, that you use on the wall it's a flat black as well because uh, i wanted some of that wood grain to show through now you want to drill the holes in your fixture so your fixtures are a perfect circle ish what i did was set that on a piece of wood drew a little template measured and marked right on the edge of the wood like the actual wood itself uh, where i was going to drill those holes for the holes that are going into the fixture itself so then i laid the fixture down onto the template marked where my holes were gonna be, and then drilled those holes in each fixture itself. Once you bring the structure back in from paint, go ahead and mount the fixtures to the conduit. And I use these little bitty bolts. Uh, they're just a tiny little nut and bolt, and I just slid it straight through the fixture, through the conduit, and put the bolt on the back side, and the Phillips head, or flat head, was on the outside. Once you get it all mounted up, go ahead and tighten those bolts down, so that way your fixtures aren't going anywhere, wobbling or making noise. This is a 5 sixteenths, by the way. Okay, it's right here. It is um, going to bend the metal. Kind of looks nice having that impression in the metal. Kind of like that. There you go. Then take your cables from the top down the conduit on one side and begin to either Velcro or zip tie all of those cables all the way down the conduit. So that way it looks really nice and tidy uh, going all the way down. The top one probably won't be long enough. It's a six foot power cord on those little fixtures and it probably won't be long enough so you'll have to add an extra cable to that. Make sure it looks really nice going all the way down as you zip tie that, cinch it down real tight. It'd be bad if I clipped a wire. Oh, God. <laughs> and then plug that into a power strip that you can mount on the back side of the bottom of the base. So if you're doing six fixtures like cornerstones, then you're gonna want at least six ports on that power strip. However, there's a big however here because you can actually split some of these lights and run them to different dimmer packs and then run that to DMX. So again, like what Cornerstone did was they did uh, the top three were on one, channel and then the bottom three are on a different channel and so you will have to split your power up if you're doing this for your stage for this purpose for the studio to just kind of make the concept i just plugged all five of these into a power strip and then i'm plugging that into a little dimmer that i can control with my phone so then once you're done with yours you put all your bulbs in and plug it in and turn it on and see if it works It will be really bright if you plug everything straight into a power strip and don't have any kind of dimmer solution like this. Check this out. That's super bright. So you want a, something to dim that or use a dimmer pack or multiple dimmer packs to make your design look really nice on stage and work with your lighting. Uh, because you want them to be able to connect to DMX. This is just plugged into a power strip into the wall. We use the GE Classic LED three times warm, white, 900 lumens, short neck. These. Links below. This is a dimmer pack, and this is what I'm talking about. You're gonna need one of these if you wanna connect it to your DMX, so your lighting control software of some sort. This dimmer pack has two inputs each channel, so two power inputs each channel, as you can see here, um, which makes this really cool because you can actually put like one section of the thing on you know, this port here, and then on this side of the stage, you can put it on this. So there's a lot of versatility with one that comes with two ports each channel. This is a four channel. So what I'm thinking that they did at Cornerstone was use two of these for the middle and then maybe one on either side of the stage. I'm not sure, I didn't ask. Uh, I could, should, but I didn't. So if you wanna know the total cost of the one that I built back there, this is including the power strip, 
the extra cable um, and buying the wood. I didn't have to buy one piece of the wood, but I went ahead and included that cost. So this is everything that you'll need. And so for one of these columns at seven foot using five lamps was $153.36. Let's add tax to that, hold on. So in my city, it would probably end up being like 164 per column going with the seven foot variety. If you're thinking about doing this design for your church, I've linked all the materials and tools that I used in the description below for you to check out. So that way you can kind of get an idea on what it's going to cost and things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember, great worship leaders are always learning. I'll see you next time.